No, well, could you tell no, me the story sh- behind it? I mean, yeah. well, is people say, how did that happen? How did you get, how did you, how did you sneak in? How did they allow <laughs> that, you know? And the thing is that every year or every, every inaugural, just about, they have this gathering, the presidential inaugural prayer breakfast, which is led by believers, but because the government won't sponsor that, but they have members of Congress, they have government officials and all this stuff there in Washington on the day of the inauguration. And we were here on the day of the election, and this inauguration was very crucial. And so here it's like, and there's, there's, there's kind of like a, well, what happened was I had mentioned, I think last time, that the Harbinger is now going to Capitol Hill, that it's touching members of Congress are beginning to read it. Right. Um, we've gotten word back yeah. from senators, from members of Congress. And one of them and one of them said there's a stirring on Capitol Hill, and it was a believer, but he's he, a famous member of Congress, and said that it's happening because of this book. They're reading this book. And so then we got a, we got a contact by a ver- someone I, I'm not saying this for, for drama. I, I'm not allowed to say it, but a very, very, very famous person, a member of Congress that you all know, uh, got in touch with us, said the person read The Harbinger, saw the DVD, the, you know, and said, we have to do something. America is in trouble. We have to pray. And the person came down and met us at Ground Zero, met us in New York City. We went to all these sites that you'll go to. We went there and prayed at each, each part. Of the, the member of Congress even went to their, their knees at one, one of these points. We prayed, and then, then they put us on a train to Washington, D.C., took us into the Capitol building in the chambers, in the inner chambers, showed us the place where they pray, where, the member, where those who are believers, they pray for pastors across the country to preach the word of God. Oh, You're a congressman. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, and, <laughs> and we prayed, and over all those, we even prayed over the spot where, where the inauguration was going to take place, you know, mm. prayed over everything. And then, and what happened is one of the people who was there, one, you know, who's, a, who's an associate of that member of Congress, they heard about the presidential inaugural prayer breakfast, and they, and they said to the person who was organizing, and said, you've got to have to get Jonathan Kahn. Now, the person who was organizing didn't, didn't even know the Harbinger, didn't even read the Harbinger, but they said, okay. And so, and so I got a call, and they said, we want you to, to speak at the, the inaugural prayer breakfast. I said, okay, you know, I, that sounds good. I thought, you know, maybe a two-minute prayer, they'll have it, you know. They said, we, know, we want you to give the keynote address. It's the keynote address. And I'm looking, Lord, this doesn't sound real here. And they, they said, well, well, how long do I have? And she says, how long do you want? I said, wow. And, 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 wow. Do you know how rare that is? Do you know and, how, uh, really, so, how rare that is? And then I said, well, what can I tell you? Know, what, what I told, she said, well, we'd like to hear about the harbinger. I said, oh. wow. Mm, so, thank you, Lord. So, thank you so the, and, and, the, and the, the weird thing is there's been this parallel between the harbinger and what's happening in America. There is that mystery we've talked about here about the pre- it begins with Washington's presidential inaugural. So here I'm at the most recent inaugural. I mean, I, that the first one is the mystery of Washington. And, and the whole thing happened when they had the prayer gathering at that inaugural. So here's now the, the most recent prayer gathering to do it. So I'm there. I, we go down. to There was so much spiritual warfare trying to stop this thing. I mean, it was crazy, crazy. You can under, and imagine. Still warfare. Yes, imagine. after it, before it, and after it. Total warfare. So I, I go down. Um, and I go down. I didn't get it. I barely got any sleep. Went down to Washington. That night got one hour sleep on top of virtually oh. no hour sleep. I was sick. I had the flu. I'm coughing. I'm oh. keeping my, my wife up, coughing. Oh. Um, I was so weak when I got in there, so weak, and we didn't know what was gonna, when they were going to call me up. They called me up for the last part, and I just said, Lord, I'm so weak. You just take it over. Mm. And um, I opened my mouth, and the Lord did his thing, Thank you know, you. Wow. by God's Thank grace. You. Why does God seem to let us be at our weakest to do the biggest job? To, to let us know, hey, 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 boy, this is not you. This is me. Just remember, it's all me, you know. And, and, then, and then at the end, I mean, I don't, I don't know, on the, on the main YouTube one, it's been on all over. It went up for, it went up for a day, we took it down, put it on the web, and then we took it down. But, but, and, and then we were saying, well, they told us not to do it, and we, and within a short time, it's been over a million people have seen that speech. Over a million. Oh. So it's just been spreading across the country. We're, it's, it's warfare. It's like underground church yeah. today, people. You don't get what's going on. You better, you better get connected with God. Yeah. Did, did, was the reaction as you gave it, were there people that say, well, this isn't what we signed up for? Or I'm sure there were, but they didn't, thankfully they didn't stand up and say anything while I was, you know. So, yeah. so um, at the end, though, I mean, because the Christians got up and they were... They were there was, was shouting. It, it, it I was, thought it was, it was a prayer <laughs> or something going yeah. on. If some people watch that and they think I'm being attacked. They think they're booing it. No, they're, they're, they were weeping and they were shouting. They were sounding the shofar. And they couldn't go on with the event. 
you know, they couldn't go on with the event. I saw some people moving around no, at and the people, end, and I thought they were they were going to march on you or yeah, something. Yeah, people, I, people think that too. No, no, they were getting up because they, they realized I was coming to the conclusion, so they were getting over to where the worship was. So uh, people thought I was being attacked. Yeah, but no, yeah. no, 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 no. So, so it was a but. There are organizations, I won't go through, you know, who are not for the gospel, I would just say. They're some very left-wing organization, and they have run it. They have put, now all of a sudden, I'm on their radar. Rabbi Khan is one of their oh. main people they write articles about, or at least one of them. So all of a sudden, they say, wow, I never was on that site before. You know, so I'm on these other <laughs> these political sites now, because they say he's influencing Congress or something. You know, so it's kind of crazy, but I guess, it's a good, I guess it's a good sign. <laughs> yeah. Those who hate the gospel have total freedom, and those that preach the gospel, we're, we're interfering somehow with yeah. their freedom. Yeah, yeah. Let's roll just a little piece of that. If quality's poor, it comes from online. It is not, you know, cinema scope. But you can hear, like right? You can understand. But, yeah. but let's roll just a little piece of it. We, too, have as a nation turned from God. We, too, have removed him as a nation from our lives. Step by step, we too have ruled him out of our culture, out of our government, out of our economy. We too have ruled him out of the instruction and lives of our children. We too have made God a stranger. And though we still at times invoke his name as a nation, it becomes increasingly hollow and meaningless. We have made ourselves strangers to God. And as we've driven God from our national life, we have brought in other gods and idols to replace them. Gods of sensuality, violence, wealth, carnality, sexual promiscuity. And as did Israel, so too we've abandoned the ways of God and the laws of God for immorality. The nation that was established to bring the word and light of God to the world now fills the earth with pornography. We too now call evil good and good evil. And what we once knew to be immoral, we now celebrate. And what we once knew to be right, we now war against. American culture has also become a culture turned in upon itself, a civilization at war against its own foundations. And those who simply remain true to what has always been known to be true are now vilified, mocked, labeled intolerant, increasingly banned from the public square, and ultimately persecuted. We've now reached the point this day that a minister was driven out of the public square, banned from praying at the inaugural for the simple reason that years ago he had preached a sermon, simply saying what the Bible clearly has always said is sin. It is a new America in which one can be banned from the public square simply for believing the Bible where profanity is treated as holy and the holy is profaned. A new America where the Bible is treated as contraband and nativity scenes are seen as dangerous. Our culture has grown increasingly godless, vulgar, darkened. We now too ridicule, mock, and blaspheme the name of God. It wasn't that long ago that American television closed its broadcasting day with sermons about the Lord. Now our televisions and computer screens are filled with words and images once unimaginable, and God and Jesus have now become objects of comedy and mockery. It's as if a spiritual amnesia has overtaken America, and the Lord asked Israel, can a nation forget its God? And yet Israel forgot, and now we too have forgotten America has forgotten her God. Powerful. Powerful. We're not allowed to run the whole thing, but we can run pieces of it. Thank you for saying what yes. we need to say, Rabbi. Wow. And you were sick. I was very One sick. One hour sleep, very but sick. you sounded better than I've ever heard I, I, you. People are saying you should be sick more often. No! <laughs> <laughs> well, in in our weakness, you know, yes. I always pray before I speak. Isn't I say, yes. in my weakness, be strong. Yeah. And I, I was, and I, as I was speaking, I was literally as if when I, it was started, I was like outside of myself, saying, "What? I, wow, this is it's happening." You know, and because it was the Lord. Why was this inauguration so significant? You was, were there. Yeah. I'm looking at this. The rabbi. <laughs> so proud. The rabbi. So proud. Who believes Jesus Christ is the not coming, he is coming back, but he's already been here. The Messiah, yes, and you're delivering, I believe, the most important address at the inauguration ceremonies. Mm. I believe mm. that with all my heart. Mm. 
Mm. This is interesting. Well, well, why is this well, such an it's, important it's, inauguration? It's, it's inter- well, because of what it represents. What happened the last time we were together, what we saw happen to America on the course it chose yeah. was sealed on that inaugural day. Right. And so I think, but I, but I think at the same time, for God to then, we were here, for God to then open that door yeah. for the gospel to go Thank like that, you. for the word to go like that, it's, God's not finished either. You know, yeah. the light, yeah. the, the darkness and the light. And so, you know, so the thing is that at this inauguration, there were some things that were, you could say, harbingers in the sense that they were, they were ominous things. First of all, there was no believer who was allowed to really have any part in it. You know, in, in the sense that there was, I alluded to it, there was a pastor who was supposed to pray. He was supposed to give the blessing. But he was banned, in a, in a sense, hounded out by the, the inaugural committee of the president to because that years ago he simply said what the Bible says about sin regarding marriage, you know, or regarding homosexuality. So he was banned. And so, that, so that's never happened before. Never happened before. And in fact, if you had Billy Graham, you know, Billy Graham was always at these inaugurals. Yes. If he came as a new believer today or a new, a new preacher, he wouldn't be allowed at least at these inaugurations, or maybe the Democrat, he, he would not be allowed uh, because of his belief. We've gotten to that point in such a short time, uh, such a short time. So he wasn't allowed, but then they had other pastors in, you know, who were, who were totally, you know, I have to say their stands are, whatever they are, apostate regarding these issues. Mm-hmm. So they spoke, and one person was saying, you know, all these signs, one person was saying, uh, was speaking about where you would have under God was part of the thing, and they took out under God. Mm-hmm. I mean, interesting. You know, during, then the president got up, you know, and for the first time in a, and none of this is politically correct, you understand what I'm saying? The president yes. got up and for the first time an American president at an inauguration called the entire nation to redefine marriage against the biblical definition of marriage. He enlisted the entire nation. He said, he went, he went through these things, people didn't realize some part of it. He, he said, he spoke about these places and the last place he said was Stonewall, St- the Stonewall uh, which is, he said, Stonewall, which is, people don't realize, he said, this is part of our heritage now, this is part of our history, this is where we're going, these are our leaders, basically is what he's saying. Stonewall was the bar in New York City where right. in the 19, late 1960s, and they attacked policemen who came in raiding it. They attacked them, it was violent. This is now, the president made it part of our proud history that we're all to follow. Oh. And he, he said that, he said, now this is the star that guides us. And so he enlisted the entire nation into star. this. He, he said the star, and he's, he said that more than once now. It's strange. The star that's guiding us through this. And so, in other words, he enlisted the entire nation. Now, the thing is about with that movement, there's no real room for Christians. They don't view believers as well, as good. They, they would rather have it, you be silent. And so, so here now the entire nation was enlisted to be part. So what, what's the future for believers? If it goes this way, this is, this is one, now, now, right now, that was ominous. These things have never happened before, never happened before. And, you know, remember in the Harbinger, one of the Harbingers, the fourth, the, the fourth one is the tower at ground zero. Right. It's the one we spoke about that's still rising. Things that have come true since the book. This is the thing that happened with the president. We can touch on it, but this is where it's going. And all the commentaries of Israel speak about this rebuilding that the nation is showing their defiance to God and their resilience. We will rebuild. We're not going to be humble. Resilience and the tower is going up to the sky like the Tower of Babel. Well, the the they also they also in Isaiah nine ten they're saying we're putting our trust in ourselves, not God, and in our own the works of our hands. Well, the, well, this poet said there. In this thing, he said, he started saying, we are to give thanks to the works of our hands. That was the first thing. We're giving thanks to our, what we have done with our hands. Then he said, and then what, what was the works of our hands? He said, he said, the last floor on the Freedom Tower. He spoke about the highest floor that he said is jutting into the sky. This is the fourth harbinger. It's jutting into the sky, and the sky is yielding to our resilience, which is basically Isaiah 9, 10. He said that at the inaugural. He spoke about the harbinger into the sky and heaven is yielding to our resilience. Oh. Heaven is yielding yielding to to our resilience. Yeah. You'll see the same words in the commentaries on Israel defying God were there. The very harbinger scripture that your book has dealt with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was continuous, and it's been continuing. I mean, we'll, we can touch on when we're together. Of these, it's continuing, and there's still more things happening that have come true since we were last here, and, and the other things just keep happening. So, yeah, it was very significant. And I believe, and, you know, 
when I gave the speech, I gave it just before the president did. So I gave the speech, and then I got down, and then people are, the Christians are shaking my hand, you know. And I look up on the screen, and I see the president shaking hands with his speech, you know. I said, I wish, I mean, you know, the two speeches were very different. And I believe that the Lord had that for that reason, where, where, you know, where there is a, God will give his grace. And that's the thing for the last days. God always has a way. You know, he, he's, never out of idea, he's never out of ideas or opportunities. We just have to be there. You know, we have to show up and we have to speak. We have to not be, and a lot of people have written on, on the web when they saw this, they said, we, you know, we ha- that's showing we have to be, thank you for being strong. Or we all have to be, because if we are timid now, if we're intimidated, then the enemy has what he wants. He shuts up the light. We have to be stronger, not weaker, more radical, not less. That's all I did, and it was in my weakness. I didn't have to know what I was doing. I don't, I, half the time I don't know what I'm doing. I had, didn't have to know that. I didn't have to be strong in myself. I had to be, I was weak, but I had to just say, Lord, I know this is you, just use me. And, yeah. that, and God, by God's yeah. grace, he did. We all have to be that way. Yeah. 